Now, therefore, I will call this vector 1. Now, for this class, we are going to do the following. 1. We are going to define to define the meaning meaning of vectors. 2. We are going to look at the difference. We are going to look at the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities and vector quantities and three we're going to look at equivalent vectors equivalent vectors and representation of vectors and representation of vectors and representation of vectors so for this class we are going to do three things we'll get the meaning of vectors by the end of this class we should also be able to give difference between a scalar and a vector quantity and at the same time we are supposed to be able to say what are equivalent vectors and how can we represent vectors so we will start with the first thing and look at the meaning of vectors now when you talk of a vector quantity we say that a vector quantity is called so because it has to possess two characteristics a vector quantity has one magnitude and two a vector quantity has direction now some may be asking what a magnitude is magnitude normally refers to length magnitude refers to length it can also be size when you look at a quantity was it what is its size what is the length for example you can say 5 kilometers, 4 centimeters, 20 kilograms. So that has to be the magnitude, the length, or the size. Now, direction is towards what particular place is this length moving. For instance, you can say that Mr. X traveled 20 kilometers from town A towards town B. Now, 20 kilometers in that case would be the magnitude and from town A to town B that would be the direction. So I want us to move ahead and look at difference between a scalar quantity and also what we call a vector quantity. Now just as I've said before, a vector quantity can be shown in a Cartesian plane. So that is a Cartesian plane. You'll be talking of x-axis. And at the same time, you are talking of y-axis. Now, be keen to show this continuity by putting an arrow at the end so that it can show that these values could increase. They could continue. We can draw any length like that. And uh, this length, we give it a direction. We have just said that vectors have direction now we can call that b and at the same time call that place a now this would be a vector quantity it is a vector quantity because one we can get the length we know for instance that we can get the horizontal movement between these two places uh, say this movement, if we were naming this, say here is five, 2 and here is 5. So we could say that our horizontal movement is 3 units. We could also get the vertical movement that way and say that the vertical displacement here is probably 
we can call here 1 and here 6. So we could say it is 5. So we know the length because we know that from A, we've moved horizontally 3 units. And at the same time, we've moved vertically 5 units. Now, this is a vector quantity. Talking about scalar quantity, for example, you could draw this line that way. Call this A, call it B. We can easily get the movement horizontally, which will be presented, presented like that, uh, say X units. Still, we can get the vertical, vertical movement, but we don't know the direction. We don't know whether we are moving from B to A or from A to B. So in this instance, we'll be talking of what we are calling a scalar quantity. Uh, let me just give you another illustration very fast. Let me just give you another illustration very fast. Now, suppose you're given a piece of block. Move it on the ground. And you're supposed to move this piece of block to a new position on the ground. So this is the piece of block. We are moving it to a new position on the ground. Say, movement of 5 meters. Now, we know that we are moving our block from point A here to point B. And we are moving 5 meters towards right-hand side. 5 meters toward right-hand side. Now, we also know that this block could again be moved towards any direction. So, in this case, what we can say is that because we are able to define that our block is moved from point A towards point B, and that is to our right-hand side, we can say that we are giving a vector quantity. That would result into what we call a vector quantity. Now, if we just say, for example, let me just illustrate it from this place. If we just say, for example, that uh, our block was moved was moved 5 meters that would be our first information and then we give a second information and say that our block was moved was moved 5 meters towards our right hand side hand side now this pieces of information the first information is telling us about block being moved five meters the direction is not said at all now in this instance we would say that this is scalar quantity scalar quantity in the second instance we are told of magnitude that is the length in which the block was moved and at the same time we are given direction towards which the block was moved so these two pieces of information will actually make us conclude that our second statement is actually talking about a vector quantity our second statement is actually talking about a vector quantity so that is the difference learners between a scalar quantity and also a vector quantity.